Appalachian sunrise meets my Hey everybody, welcome back or to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing amazing. Today I've decided to show you guys an updated how I edit my YouTube videos and videography stuff like that. I did a video in the past a couple years ago, I think it was like 2021, but I wanted to do an updated one for you guys just because a lot of my equipment has been updated. Some things I do in iMovie, yes I said iMovie. Some things I do in my video process is a little bit different, so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an updated how I edit my YouTube videos. So I'm gonna show you guys everything that I use from my camera gear to planning the video to editing it and also my little tips and tricks for how I edit on a budget, inexpensive software, and yeah. So like I said in the beginning, I uh, edit all of my videos on iMovie. I 100% would go with iMovie. There's other apps out there. Final Cut Pro is an obvious one that a lot of people know about, but it is $300 and I find iMovie perfectly fine to use. In this video, I also want to emphasize you can make a really good quality video without fancy editing softwares and stuff like that. I've been editing all my YouTube videos on iMovie for the past couple of years, a lot of years. I've gotten into a pretty good flow with how I edit my YouTube videos. I can edit them within a couple days after filming, between one to three days after, and then it's uploaded. So yes, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and let's get into the first bit of it, which is camera gear. Okay, so getting into, why is it so bright? I'm gonna open the window really quickly. Does that make a difference? Haha. <laughs> meet in the middle. So starting with camera equipment, I have a full set of everything from videography to vlogs to travel videos and stuff like that. So everything I have oh my gosh. is in this <laughs> backpack and I have this just laying out. But before everything I used to have is like was in like a a bin, like a little bin, but I feel like it wasn't protected enough. So the first camera that I'm actually recording on right now, but I wish I could show you guys. Maybe I can show you guys. <laughs> this is the camera I'm filming on right now. Um, I recently updated. It is the Sony a6400 and the lens I used is the Sony 11 millimeter wide angle lens and this is such a recent upgrade and I'm so happy I bought this lens. So this is my vlog setup. Also like talking videos like this. Like this is just like my setup for filming stuff like this. So before I got the 6400, I would film on, this is, oh my God, I used to use this camera all the time. This is my Sony a5100 and this camera is a really, really good option if you are looking for a budget-friendly camera. You could probably buy on like eBay for about 300 bucks or something like that, but you can see this has been through it. So yeah, this is the camera I would film all my YouTube videos on, travel vlogs, all that stuff, and I would just use the kit lens. So that's another option. But I recently updated to the a6400 and I love it so much. The next camera I'm gonna talk about, it's not another camera, it's the same body that I use, so the a6400. This is my videography setup and I use Sony E70 to 350mm f4.5 to 6.3G OSS <laughs> telescopic zoom lens. Can you say that 10 times fast? This lens goes on the a6400 and this is my videography setup. So if I'm doing any surf videography, sometimes I like to use this for travel. It is very bulky and heavy, so it's not always like the best option. But yeah, this is the lens for my videography stuff and it takes really good photos as well. So yeah, this is the lens I use and I love it. The next camera I'm gonna talk about is my adventure camera, I call it, but it's my GoPro. So I use a surfing and hiking if I don't wanna take this camera cause it is pretty nice. This one you can drop, you could throw in the mud. <laughs> It'll be okay. I have two. So basically I, ha I had the GoPro 6, Hero 6 Black I think it's called. and this you can see all the sand that's in there. And I recently upgraded to the Hero 7. Yeah, they're pretty much the same quality. I find that this one has a little bit better image quality, but they're both great. I love them. And I have a couple accessories for it. This is the floaty Bodhi. I used to put it on my surfboard 
on like the actual surfboard so if it ever fell off this would catch it now i use this for surfing instead of it on my board because i don't want like a clasp on my board you know what I'm saying? I, I want my board to not have any accessories for the GoPro. So this is a mouth mount. It is this brand. And this is what I use for surfing and stuff. And then I made a little DIY project. I attached two lanyards that go right here and hook onto my wetsuit. And I like attach it to the bottom. So it's a pretty DIY setup, but it works. The next camera I'm gonna talk about is my drone. I use the DJI Mini 2. So I use this for videography, travel even, if I wanna take it or can take it. So this is what it looks like. It's a super compact, drone and that's why I like it because it's really light very accessible except the battery does wear out I have three batteries so but other than that it's a great camera and I love this camera so much so that's pretty much it for camera equipment the couple other things I'm gonna talk about is my hard drive so I use the Lacey everyone uses this hard drive and I recently had to get a new one I used to use this one this was my hard drive for years and it filled up like all the way so I needed a new one this one is I think a two terabyte hard drive and this is what I use to store all of the raw clips of my video the video itself the thumbnails the text even sometimes the music if I want to like have it in the folder of what video I use it for this is what I use to store all my footage the last bit of equipment is my MacBook <laughs> And that's it. So this is my MacBook Pro. It's like a 2014 MacBook Pro. It is a little bit old, so it needs a little fan to help it not overheat. Cause when I export it, it sounds like it's dying. But other than that, runs great. A couple other things is I have three, four tripods. I have this one. This is like a vlog tripod for this camera that I'm using right now. And then you can sit it down. So this one's very handy. This camera though with the lens is a little bit heavy. So this part does move around quite a bit if you bump it by accident. Accident. But other than that, I might look into one that doesn't have this kind of swivel part at the top just so it's not gonna fall. These two are both for my GoPro. This one is just a regular like stick tripod that floats and I use this all the time in the water. You can see that it's a little bit sandy. This one I just got new. It also floats as well, but it extends and then it also is a tripod so you can set your camera down and record. And I didn't have one that had a tripod thing like that. This one didn't like, it was hard to stand it on the ground. So these are my two little tripods. I have a water housing for my GoPro, but I don't use it as often. I would love to get a water housing for this camera, but I'm so, so nervous to put my camera I use all the time in the ocean. I don't know. I don't know about that one. I might do it later on, but I just bought this camera, so I don't want to put it in the water. But I have like little housings like this for my GoPro. But other than that, that's pretty much it. SD cards, batteries. We don't need to go into that. That's everything with my equipment. Why do I still use iMovie after all these years? Let me tell you. <laughs> I use iMovie because it's cheap. It's really easy to use. You can honestly do the same amount of things with iMovie that some other things I can get into like colorization, text and all that stuff. But I do have hacks for getting like your own special text, colorization. It just takes a little bit more effort, but it's worth it to me, honestly, to just do that instead of buying the $300 editing software. Maybe I'm totally wrong, but this is working for me and I'm gonna show you some like tips and tricks and stuff because I get a lot of questions of what do I use to edit and yeah, it's just iMovie. The first step I do is I plan a video and planning a video honestly is so effortless. I don't want it to be stressful. If I wanna film, I'm gonna film. If I'm not gonna film, I'm not gonna film. YouTube is like a hobby to me, so I'm gonna make it fun regardless. I'm not gonna force myself to film something I don't want to. Planning a video, I like to plan stuff that I like to watch myself or that I'm really passionate about. So on this channel, I do a lot of health and fitness things, which I'm a passionate about. About, but I also love to watch like travel videos, um, just fun little day things, being like happy spirit positive. So that's kind of like my vibe. 
um, and I like to project, I think that's what I was trying to say, project that onto my videos and just have a little fun space for you guys. I'm trying this year to post about every week, so that's four videos a month. I keep notes in my phone. I just come up with these ideas in my head, they kind of just pop in my head, or if I see like inspiration to do a video, I will write it down. And then every month, I'm gonna go through that list and kind of pick the videos that I feel like I wanna film for that month, that I'm really passionate and I wanna project onto my channel. It's very free form to me. But yeah, that's kind of like the planning aspect of my videos. So going step by step, first step is importing all the footage. When I import it, I just import it into a folder on my laptop. I put all the raw clips in there. So in a folder, within the folder, I have a folder called um, clips and that's where all the clips go for that video. And that's, that's kind of how I organize it. And then I import all of that into iMovie and the editing process starts from there. The second step that I do for my YouTube videos is rough cutting. Basically when I have all the footage in there, I like to organize it for kind of how I want the video to start to end and it's basically in sync of how I filmed it. Typically, if I have any overlays like I've been doing in this video with like showing the camera, with me talking, that's a little bit different. That will come later, but I just wanna rough cut my talking. So taking out the ums, taking out the bloopers, just taking out like the long pauses, stuff like that. That's it's just basically rough cutting for me. The third step is picking music. So once everything is kind of rough cutted of how I want the video to go, I'll go ahead and look up some music. And the music I use is from Epidemic Sounds. I purchased Epidemic Sounds, the subscription, about I would say two years ago. And it was so worth it to me because finding non-copyrighted music is torturous. <laughs> I have been doing this for years and years and years. They have a lot of good options from like vlogs to videography to just anything that you need. I go into Epidemic Sounds and for the video that I'm using, I kind of have a vibe in my head of how I want it to sound. So I kind of go through, like if it's a slow morning, I will pick some soft, I don't know, jazz sometimes. It depends on my mood. I'll pick some sort of music that corresponds with the video that I'm making. And that's pretty much it for music, honestly. If you're looking for non-copyrighted music, I for years would search on the audio library from YouTube and you can download their audio. But yeah, that's a great option as well. And it's free, I believe. I believe it's free. So yeah, that's how you can get another copyrighted, non-copyrighted music for your videos. Also, there's been a hanger in this whole video this whole time. My next step is step four, which is final cutting. This is where I put the clips to any beats in the song I wanna use or that I'm using. This is where I kinda make sure like this is how I want the video to go. So I kinda clip more clips off if I need to, but that's my step four, which is final cutting. So step five is kind of a fun step. Um, this is where I add text, I add video elements, such as like cute little screens like this, little elements like my like subscribe button for Instagram, my subscribe button, my follow button for Instagram. And yes, this I made free. I'll teach you how I did that. Any other things like cinematic borders or my videography, sound effects, stuff like that. Once everything has music and it has my final cut of the footage, I add some some text if the video calls for it. I don't like the font of any <laughs> of the pre-selected text they have in iMovie. So this is my little hack for getting better text. I have been using Photoscape X for years now. I used to make my thumbnails on there and I do my text on here. Basically, you have to get a transparent background. I just downloaded mine from Google. So try and find transparent background, completely transparent, and you just import that onto Photoscape. I go ahead and insert the text I want. So my, kind of like my fonts I use are these five, four, yeah, five. Say, let's say I'm saying it's Sunday. I then drag it to the center. Oops. Oh, <laughs> well. And then I hit save and then I like to label it what it is. And then I save it to my desktop. Boom, it's on your desktop. And then you go back into here. And then I basically just import that text um, image that I just saved on the Photoscape. I go ahead and drag it to the timeline and then it'll automatically have like a zoom in. Um, you basically wanna go to the little crop image at the top and hit crop to fill so it doesn't zoom in. 
and then you need to slide these bars so they does, it doesn't like dissipate in, dissipate out. It just kind of boom right there. That if that what you, if that's what you want. Um, but yeah, so then I just add it on here. So yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much how I do my text. Say that you want to do like an, a location text kind of like this. Basically, I go here, I type in the location. So we're gonna say California. <laughs> to add the little location button, I d also downloaded that from Google. And I go ahead and import that. And then this particular one that I downloaded is gray. Um, but you can fix that by going to fill and you can fill it any color you want drag it next to your image And then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna save it I like to abbreviate just to make my life easier and then you're gonna do the same thing and you're gonna import it and Now if you want it in the corner um, Like I had and had the example um, You're gonna do the same thing so crop to fill but you're going to go to this little button here you're gonna go here and then you're going to hit picture in picture and then it kind of goes somewhere <laughs> randomly. Then you slide it to your area that you want. There it is. <laughs> if you add any sound effects, all the sound effects I download are from Epidemic Sound so they do have sound effects. Basically, you just import it and you put it in the bottom part. But iMovie does have one sound effect that I kind of use, um, not too often, but I kind of use. I like, now I like to use like a clicking sound like this which is from Epidemic Sounds, but if you don't have Epidemic Sounds, you go into the sound effects and search a bottle cork or something like that. And then you line it up next to your text. There you go. So that's pretty much the text and the sound effects. So I'm doing a project for videography and I want to do a cinematic thing. Um, you can download cinematic borders from Google as well. Just make sure the background is transparent. Same thing with the cinematic. You're going to go to crop to fill. And there you go. That's how you do cinematic. For little elements that I had in the beginning of this video. So that little part, that is from Canva. If say like you have like an intro, you are gonna save that little intro into another like project on iMovie, save it and export it. So you have that main clip. So yeah, now that we're in Canva, you basically get this framing. I think you can just look up like TV framing or something like that. And I don't have Canva Pro, so this is, you can use this. And then you import your video and then you hit share and then you download it to your desktop. And then once it's downloaded, you add it into your video and then you add the text on top of whatever you want to say so that's pretty much for like the cute little elements in my videos for the Instagram subscribe button this was kind of like a fun little project I had basically I created all of that in Photoscape so I used the transparent background I basically had to create it from scratch so I have two so I, I have one that says follow and then one that says following how I made this is I took a picture I made it a circle and then you add a little circle so it's kind of like the Instagram follow button then I added then you send that to the back and then and then you just do text so you put in your user you're gonna do a different font I honestly don't know what font I use but this one's pretty similar so we're just gonna do that and then you're gonna add another little circle oval thing that's blue like the follow button and then you're gonna type in follow like the follow button, make that white. And that's pretty much it. And then you make a second one. So you're gonna change this one to gray. So basically you're gonna save that image and then you're gonna do this one and make it following. And you're gonna change this to following. And that's how I make my little Instagram follow button. Um, and then you import both of those into your iMovie. This one takes a little bit of patience, but you have to sync it up onto the same area. So they play back to back. And then you're gonna add a little click sound like this. And that's how you make it. That is pretty much step five of my editing process. If I were to do colorization on my video, that's kind of like towards the end of my video process. And I use Visco or the editing area in like photos of your iPhone. <laughs> this is where you can add filters, all of this fun stuff. I usually don't do the filters. I usually just go into the tools and I like fix any exposure, any like contrast um, saturation. I also love to use HSL, which 
which um, can target a specific color to change it. So like for like ocean scenes, I like to make them a little bit more like on the green blue side and then make the green pop more. So it's up to you honestly um, how you want to color your videos. And then I just airdrop it to my computer and I just put that clip into my iMovie timeline and that's kind of for colorization. The second last step is my end screen and this is super, super easy. I made mine on Canva. On Canva, you don't need the paid subscription to do like typey motions. I have a recorded screen of my end screen and then a screenshot of it so it can play a little longer, but usually I like my end screen to be 15 to 20 seconds. I have mine saying subscribe and another one that says watch next. So I put another video there in the final steps of the YouTube editing. Step eight is to make a little intro. So I make an intro for the video just to kind of give the overall vibe of the video. Not all my videos have it, but majority of them do. It's so fun to make and I usually leave it for last because I want the intro to have a similar vibe to the whole entire video. Basically, I just have a really fun song and then I put the clips from the whole video, kind of highlight certain key parts I want to highlight and add any text I want to add or elements. So this one had some elements, but the rest were just little clips. The last step is doing a thumbnail. So once my video is all done, I'll export it and then I'll have it uploading to YouTube because it usually takes my computer and with my Wi-Fi about like 30 minutes to an hour depending how long the video is. But while that's doing its thing, I'll make the thumbnail and for thumbnails, I use Canva again. I used to use Photoscape, but now I have been liking Canva. So it depends, but now I use Canva because I like the text that's on there. For thumbnails, more like this or like this. Basically in Canva, I make it super easy on myself and they have like thumbnail examples ready to go. You want your thumbnail to be 1280 by 720. That's the thumbnail dimensions for YouTube. I usually pick one of these because they have like the format. This one's pretty cute too with the pictures, but it has the format. I add the photos from that video. I make it super easy and just add some cute text of what the video is. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the thumbnails. For this one, I added the font up here. I added kind of like little pieces of fonts um, to like what the video kind of is. And then I add a little location button which you can look up in elements on the side button. And I added a little circle icon for photos and then you import the photo that you want. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> So that was pretty much everything I do for my YouTube videos and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. Hope this helped at least one of you guys and if you are wanting to start a little YouTube channel, definitely do it. Um, it's very fun and do it because you're passionate about it because there's no joy in doing something if you're not passionate about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos about health, wellness, travel, stuff like that. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Anyways, uh... <laughs>